Massachusetts. There's another trial um, happening up in Wisconsin, uh, just north of uh, Adam there in uh, the great state of Illinois, and it is the tear drop, the eye drop murder trial. And uh, this is another interesting one. Jesse Kurzuski accused of killing her friend, Lynn Hernan, by giving her a fatal dose of eye drops. Investigators say that Krzyzewski uh, then staged the scene to look like a suicide, but the, the, the deceit did not stop there. It's kind of another one of these complicated murder, alleged murder stories. So let's turn to our Matt Johnson to uh, bring us up to date. Jesse Krzyzewski is facing murder and theft charges that could send her to prison for the rest of her life. The state believes this defendant has evidenced her capacity to take advantage of at-risk individuals and poses a risk to the public both through her financial victimization and ultimately violent behavior toward victim A in this case. Kurzuski called 911 in October 2018 to report her friend was unconscious and not breathing. According to a court document, first responders arrived to the scene to find Lynn Hernan in a recliner in the living room and a large amount of crushed medication on her chest and a plate directly to the left of her with a large amount of what appeared to be crushed up medication still on the plate. First responders initially suspected Hernan died of a drug overdose. Krzyzewski allegedly told police that Hernan was suffering from health issues and was suicidal. But when her friend died, Krzyzewski became sole heir to her estate, worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Just eight days after Hernan's death, Krzyzewski advertised a rummage sale on her Facebook page, offering up all of Hernan's personal belongings, including furniture, clothes. Even her one-bedroom condo was for sale at a big discount. Krzyzewski's behavior raised some red flags with Hernan's relatives, who, according to police, did their own checking and discovered she allegedly had a history of forgery and fraud. But it was the medical examiner who performed Hernan's autopsy who raised police suspicions about her death. Toxicology results indicated something potentially sinister. Tetrahydrolazine, which is the active ingredient in most of the leading eye drops that are out there, um, is very lethal. The pathologist ruled that Hernan died from a fatal dose of tetrahydrosaline. The ME concluded that the amount found in her blood was impossible to achieve by simply using it in the eyes and ruled her death a homicide. It is a horrible, languishing way to die. When police confronted Kurzuski about Hernan's poisoning death, she allegedly made several conflicting statements before finally telling detectives that Hernan bought Visine in bulk and wanted her to put it in her water bottle. Prosecutors allege Krzyzewski murdered Hernan to take over her assets so that she could pay off gambling debts that she racked up in area casinos. Krzyzewski maintains her innocence and on her Facebook page denied any wrongdoing. She states in part this, you cannot take suicide and turn it into a homicide, nor can you say money that was given was then taken. It has been 1,278 days since she passed. When will they get it right? This is not a game. This is my life. All right, this case, again, uh, starting up this week as well with jury selection. Judge Jennifer Duro is the presiding judge in this case. We remember her from the Daryl Brooks case. Adam Syed is uh, still with us. And Adam, the, this is a story that we're going to hear likely in the openings, and it is a, an old one, but it, boy, it sure does ring true with jurors. If you follow this case through, it always comes back to the money and that is motive uh, and it's in motive for so many cases is that what we're you're expecting the prosecution to really latch on to here well i think that uh, motive is uh, is going to be there and you know there's a circumstantial evidence component of things this uh, defendant is in a situation where she inherited the bulk of um, the estate it's a very strange death and allegedly the uh, the defendant also potentially knew about suicidal attempt uh, intent so the defendant uh, knew about suicidal intent was going to inherit all the money and then didn't say anything about it um, that is uh, I think that that that's a lot of circumstantial evidence and 
important. I think that I do expect them to talk about motive. I also expect them to talk about how unusual that it would be for a suicide victim to uh, take their own life by way of uh, this torturous death of consuming six bottles of Visine. Um, now, that sounds like somebody who wanted to do something clandestinely. Yeah, absolutely. The idea that uh, I'm going to um, research this, yes, it's lethal, very painful and torturous. That sounds like a great way to go. Um, it just doesn't ring true. It'll be a, a fascinating case to see play out. wonder if the, the defendant's going to take the stand in this one. It'll uh, be interesting. Likely not, if you consider all the questions that would be coming our way uh, about her gambling issues, et cetera, that are alleged by uh, the state. But we'll see. Uh, that one in Wisconsin, the other one in Florida. We want to thank Adam Zayed uh, for your time and expertise. Really appreciate you having you on today. Enjoy the rest of your Monday.